So use the graph of y equals 2 to the x to graph this. Now, first of all, we have to start to recognize how the transformations show up. So when we talk about transformations unit, we had things that happened inside the functions and things that happened outside of the function. And one of the hard parts about exponential functions is that in the parent graph, there's a number. So here's your parent graph. It swoops up like this. It has 0, 1 and 1, 2 and an asymptote right here. So there's your graph of your parent graph. And the key thing is your parent graph has a 2 built into it. So one of the mistakes sometimes people do with a question like this, they see the 3 and the 2 and they want to multiply them together to make them 6. According to order of operations, that's not allowed because you would be multiplying before you figured out the exponent. And since the exponent has a variable in it, there's nothing you can figure out. But we can't multiply the 3 by the 2 because we would be disobeying order of operations. When we talked about transformations, everything that happened outside of the function affected the y values. So in this case, this 3 is going to be a vertical stretch. You're going to multiply your y values by 3. The negative is a horizontal reflection, right? Horizontal reflections that affect your x values, flip them over the y-axis. And the 2 is also inside the function. Can you see that all those numbers are inside where the exponent was? And where the exponent is is where your x is. That's all affecting your x values. So that is going to be a horizontal translation. Which way will it go if it's plus 2? Normally, you'd say left. Why does this one go right? Hmm? Not because it's an exponent. Nobody set their alarm for 10 o'clock for the special note. Right, whenever you have a horizontal stretch or reflection and a horizontal translation, it needs to be written in factored form in order to do the transformations. In this one, in this one we're going to have to rewrite this to be y equals 3 times 2 to the factor out the negative Oops, x minus 2. Do you remember that special note? I find it's easiest to forget when there's just that negative there. You forget to write it in factored form. So now this horizontal translation based on this is going to be 2 to the right, not 2 to the left. So what we do when we go to graph this is we take the key points that we had on our original graph, which are 0, 1, and 1, 2, and we look at our asymptote, and we do our transformations like we normally would with stretches and compressions first, and then translations at the end. Yes? So what would happen if, like, the negative on the exponent is the reflection, then what would happen if you had a negative? Like negative x minus 2? When you fact the base the base will never be negative okay. ever why um, there's a problem with this equation and the problem is what happens when x is a half this is one example of a problem do you remember what an exponent of a half means? What's another way? Mental math, what's this equal to? Oh, you've forgotten. Huh? 
right? Remember that? Radicals. Nine to the half is the square root of nine, so this would equal three. What's the problem with negative two to the half? Can't take a square root of a negative. So that's why our bases in our note earlier are always positive. So if we take the original points on our original graph and we go from left to right, we have that our y value is getting multiplied by 3, our x value is getting multiplied by negative 1, and then finally we're going 2 to the right. We'll go to 0, 3, negative 1, 6, then 2 to the right would go to 2, 3, and positive 1, 6. And what happens to our asymptote? What happens to y equals 0 when you multiply things? Nothing. Can you see that anything you do to the x will not affect a y equals 0? Only things that happen to y. In fact, the only thing that's going to affect that asymptote at y equals 0 is if you move it up or move it down. Stretching or compression, since it starts at 0, doesn't make an, a difference. So in this case, that asymptote stays the same. And when we go to graph this, we can label our new points. We have a point at 2, comma 3. We have a point at 1, comma 6. It must swoop down, and our asymptote is still at y equals 0. So this is a review of the transformations unit. Sometimes these graphs get added into the transformations unit, but because there's so many different parent functions, and because there's a number involved, often it gets added into this unit. So it lets you review your transformations unit, but they're a little bit trickier just because you have to get used to, again, what's inside the function and what's outside of the function. So we're going to do another two examples. I think you have space if at the bottom of page 346 and probably still have space at the bottom of 347. But before we graph our next ones, let's answer these questions. Is our new graph increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. What is the intercept? Well, how do we find a y-intercept? It doesn't show up on my graph. But how would you find a y-intercept if you don't have it on your graph? Calculate, Calculate it with plugging in. Let's plug in 0 for x. Can you see if I put 0 in for x, I'd have 2 squared. 4 times 3 is 12. The y-intercept is at 12. Put 0 in for x. 2 squared is 4 times 3. Yeah, good. The equation, <laughs> the equation of the asymptote is still going to be y equals 0. The domain is everything, and here our range is still y is bigger than or equal to 0. For exponential functions, the domain is always everything, but the range gets affected whether you move it up or down. Oh, not greater or equal. Thank you for noticing. We did that on the last one, too. I just got overexcited. It's not supposed to be equal on the last one, either. Just greater than 0, because it's an asymptote. All right, I'm going to introduce you to a new number. The number E. OK, 
Can you find the number E on your calculator? I can find the number E on my calculator. Yeah. Oh. Say, say 357. Yeah, or you can do it at the bottom of 346. Either, either space, wherever. Oh, yeah. We have two more graphing examples. E is approximately 2.718281828, and then it, you'd think it keeps going in that pattern, but it doesn't. Well, that is. <laughs> Later on in this unit, I'll show you one place where the number E happens naturally in the world of mathematics, just like the number pi happens naturally. Pi you get introduced to early in your math careers because it deals with circumference and area of a circle. E is not scientific notation. It's right above the division button. And it is another special number like pi. So if If you go to graph e to the x, it is exactly the same graph as 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 5 to the x. Just now your base is some weird looking number, 2.718. And so when graphing it, you're going to have the point 0, 1, just like normal. And then you're going to have the point 1, 2.718, which we'll just label as 1, e and estimate where 2.7 would be. Because it's going through those two points, it's going to swoop up. You still have your asymptote at y equals 0. And this is the graph of e to the x. That's it. That's it. Why would we learn about the number e? Well, next year. When you're in calculus. Um, <laughs> such a good segue. Uh, you're going to find out that calculus is about studying rates of change. And one way that you study the rate of change is by looking at slopes. Okay? And the way that you look at slopes on a graph is you look at, at this point right here, what's the slope of the tangent line that touches that graph? Okay? And this, you ask where e comes in important, is the function of y equals e to the x is the only function that exists ever where when you draw the tangent at 0, 1, the slope of this line happens to be 1. When you draw the tangent line at 1, comma e, the slope of that tangent line happens to be e. And whatever point you choose on this graph, so for example, it has 2, comma e squared. If you drew the tangent line at that point, the slope of that tangent line would be e squared. No other graph does that, which makes e special in calculus. And it just happens to be some stupid number, just like pi is some stupid number. That is how the life of math works. Why isn't pi something like? Make it easy. Well, maybe, maybe it could have been easy, but we decided to choose bad numbers for counting. We could. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, here is your next one. You want to graph y equals 3, e to the x minus 2, minus 1. So above, we just graphed our parent function. And now we have to do transformations with it. Yeah. 
Oh, yay. What's the three going to do? Vertical. Vertical. Stretch. We're going to multiply y by three or one third? Three. Three. Good. Is the, if it was horizontal, then it's the reciprocal, right? Do we have to write this in factored form or is it good? It's good. What's the two going to do? Horizontal, translation, two to the right. What's this negative one going to be? Vertical or horizontal? Vertical, translation, one down. So now if we take the points on our original graph, which are 0, 1, 1, E, and y equals 0, and we draw our arrows, do our stretches first, and then our translations, what do we have for stretches? We just have one stretch. We have to multiply our y values by 3. So this is 0, comma, 3. And this one's going to be 1, comma, 3. Right? So we have 0, comma, 3 and 1, comma, 3. <laughs> OK, excellent. And then we're going to go 2 to the right and 1 down. Well, 1 down, we'll change that to negative 1 and this one to 0. 2 to the right will be? 3 plus, oh, I went wrong way, whoops. 2 to the right will make this 2 and this 3. 1 down will make this 2 and this one? 3e minus 1. You can't put those together because they're not like terms. And what's going to happen to our asymptote? It's moving. Oops, wrong color. It's moving down one. So when we go to sketch this graph, our asymptote is at y equals negative one. Asymptotes at y equals negative 1. We've got the point 2, comma 2. How do we graph 3, comma 3 minus 1? Well, you can estimate 3 by taking 2.7 and multiplying it by 3. Eight 8.1-ish. And then 8.1-ish minus 1 be 7 point something. So I can go 3 and then up here around 7, estimate where 3 minus 1 is. Yes? No, usually they're non-calculator. OK. And you would just have to be able to mental math estimate it. The negative 1 due to this point, like 3e, I would go 3 times 2.7, right, and get 8.1. Then I'd subtract 1, which would get it to be 7.1. Still has the same shape as before. Goes through the two points that you've labeled. And there's your final graph. Do you want to do one more transformations one before working on some questions? No, I have another one that has a th just a three, but not a three. <laughs> okay. If you want to grab some scrap paper, try this one.
graph. Did you label these things correctly? Here is a vertical reflection, vertical stretch. Together, you're multiplying your y values by negative 5. The 3 is your parent function. Your parent function here is y equals 3 to the x. So the 3 doesn't do anything to transformations because it's part of the original graph. The next thing, so sometimes what's helpful is if you figure out what your parent graph is, and you highlight all the stuff that's part of your parent graph, those are things that are not transformations. Those are just part of your original graph. So this 2, that will be a horizontal compression. You're going to multiply x by a half. Here we have a horizontal translation, 4 to the left. And here we have a vertical translation, 7 down. Yes? Yes? Well, what's, what are you going to have on 3? You're going to have 1 comma. Yeah. So we'll have on our original graph, we have 0, 1 and 1 comma 3, and our asymptote starts at y equals 0. So you can label your stretches and compressions. We get negative 5 and negative 15. x by half, this will still be 0. This will now be a half. 4 to the left, negative 4, negative 3.5, 7 down, negative 12, and negative 22. What's going to happen to our asymptote? It's going to move down 7 as well. So now, considering where your points are and considering your asymptote, I'm going to draw my axes like this. Draw my asymptote at y equals negative 7. Label my points. I have 4 comma negative 12, sorry, negative 4, negative 12, and negative 3.5, negative 22. Based on those points going towards my asymptote, it's got to swoop this way. So questions 10 and 13 for practice.